What has Jerusalem to do with Athens? On one side, there's Jerusalem, the place of origin for Judaism and the Christian religion. On the other is Athens, where the Greeks idealized rational thinking. Despite the overwhelming agreement between people for the need of some sort of separation between the church and the state, with many predicting that religion would gradually wither off in the face of modernization, quite the opposite has happened and the relationship between religion and politics continues to be an important theme in the history being created every day, making the distinction between the Greek and Hebrew cultures significant to this day. And the questions that were a major focus of the Enlightenment in the West have made a comeback. Do states owe their authority to divine right? Has God delegated to rulers the authority to wage war in order to achieve religious aims? Do secular rulers have the authority to suppress believers? What authority does the state retain when its principles conflict with God's? Is political authority to be grounded in the claims of revelation or reason? Jerusalem or Athens? Looking at the world today, religion has clearly emerged as a powerful force inspiring nationalist identity, movements for independence and revolutionary violence. The 1979 Shia revolution in Iran, the rise of liberation theology in South America, the political success of Hindu fundamentalism in India, the conflicts of Bosnia and Kosovo, the ongoing violence in Israel and Palestine all offer ample evidence that religion has by no means become a minor force. Which begs the question, which came first, religion or politics? Which is more natural and what differentiates the two? Is politics the child of religion? Or is religion just a chapter in the history of politics? What is religion and politics? Is in the early man worshipping the sun, the rain and the moon religion? Similarly, when a human child starts crying louder than another to get more of the attention from the mother, is that not politics? How do you discuss something so controversial and so complicated that scholars fail to even agree on any one definition? Still, for the purpose of this discussion, let's think of politics as the management of people who accept or oppose the policies of a state and religion as our relation to what is regarded as the sacred, holy, spiritual or divine. About five to six thousand years ago came a crucial point in history as a managerial solution to the dilemma of a large population, what we now call a civilization or the state, came into existence. Then between two to three thousand years ago, in various places around the world, over a relatively short span of time, all the great founding philosophies or systems of morality that we still refer to today, such as Taoism, Confucianism, Buddhism or the Abrahamic religions appeared in parallel with no obvious connection in different civilizations. Till now, people saw supernatural forces within all material things. Transcendent religions, for example Christianity, took this supernatural out of all material things where it could control the universe. Once the supernatural was made to lie beyond the limits of ordinary experience, it became possible to create a monotheistic religion and everyone began to see God as a big guy somewhere up in the sky. This period in human moral and spiritual development has bestowed upon the world the political, cultural and philosophical shape it has today. Life in an exploitative society naturally generates opposition, which is often revolutionary and prophetic. Life in a civilization also generates thinkers, philosophers who try to work out how best to endure in such conditions. And more often than not, if the political movement designed to revolutionize the state becomes successful, then not only a new state is formed, but also a new religion. Several of the founding philosophers are known to have wandered around their region discussing their ideas in the cities of different states. For example, Jesus Christ was an expression of political discontent within a Roman occupation. Christianity was a response to the aspects of a foreign state power. In fact, all religions are a response to living in a state. Either they begin as controlling ideologies at the beginnings of a state or as oppositional political movements after the states have been established. Guru Nanak founded Sikhism mainly against the spiritual ignorance and caste system prevalent in a culture that had institutionalized discrimination. But the evolution of the Sikh community through a complex dynamics of power and interests has resulted in the evolution of a Sikh caste hierarchy distinct from but parallel to that of a Hindu caste system. 
the first transcendent religions can be said to have developed in order to control and exploit the population in a society. But the religions that followed, such as Christianity, were political objections to the state that relied on reference to God for authority. If they became successful, they did not do away with the state, they did not bring heaven to earth and they did not depose transcendence. They became part of the exploitative system. In fact, the very terms religion and politics are a fairly recent idea, largely the product of European Enlightenment and philosophers like Locke and Kant. Of course, the reflections on the nature of spiritual and political power was not a modern phenomena. Plato's Republic, Kautilya's Arthashastra, the works of Arab theologians in early Islam all represent serious analysis of the ideal polity and its relationship to the divine. Yet the idea of them as two distinct spheres which should have as little to do with one another as possible emerged against the medieval Catholic Church and perhaps demarketing religion as a separate category distinct from social structures, art, economics and other aspects of human activity was itself an inherently political act. Religion was deemed to be inappropriate for any affairs other than the metaphysical. Then many 19th century authors critiqued the very nature of religion itself. Karl Marx thought of religion as the most extreme form of ideology and called it as the spiritual aroma of the state masking the oppressive social conditions and making them appear agreeable and divinely ordained. Some feminists critique that Western religious institutions have supported a fundamentally patriarchal society and political structures built upon the oppression of female power. Daly suggested that they need to castrate God in order to free themselves. So in the middle of the 20th century, scholars began to react against what they saw as the reduction of religion to various other non-religious explanations. They sought to reaffirm the independent, autonomous nature of the religious experience beyond any social or political phenomena. The most influential figure in this regard and arguably the most influential historian of religion in the 20th century was Mircha Eliade. For Eliade, religious phenomena are fundamentally of their own origin which must be taken seriously on their plane of reference and not reduced to on one of its secondary aspects such as economic, social structure, psychology or politics. This provided the basis for a kind of new humanism on a global scale that we live in today. This new humanism demands an appreciation for the religious worldviews of all cultures as legitimate encounters with the sacred that cannot be explained away as masks for political interests or mere products of social structure. This combined with the rise of liberal democracies around the world where every group had a voice, religion was bound to make a comeback. Amongst the most striking features of the 19th and 20th centuries is the rise of a new form of religious nationalism in more or less all parts of the world. Indeed, it would seem that much of the world simply does not share the ideal of a secular modern nation based on a clear separation of church and state. Instead, many national identities have been born out of deep religious roots. For example, in India, Bharat Mata or Mother India has emerged as a powerful civil religious deity usually portrayed as a goddess much like Durga riding a lion circled with a halo of flames and superimposed on the map of India. A reformed religious and national identity has been an integral part of the rise of modern India, Sri Lanka, Israel, various parts of the Muslim world, Kosovo, Bosnia and even the United States. The modern state of Israel provides perhaps the clearest example of a new political entity emerging out of the collapse of a European colonial power and founded on a uniquely religious identity. Mahatma Gandhi in his autobiography said, Those who say religion has nothing to do with politics do not know what religion is. What has Athens to do with Jerusalem? Well, apparently everything. If you guys are new to the channel, then I do encourage you to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single video on our channel. As well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button below. We make content on a wide range of subjects and you can even suggest us the topics you want us to cover in the comment section below.